All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking in Vyond at this hour, where the Russian forces are advancing towards the Ukrainian capital from the north, west, and also from the northeast. A top Ukrainian official has said that Kiev is effectively now under siege by the Russian military. The Russian artillery also targeted an ammunition depot in the Ukrainian town of Vasil Kiev, and it is located just on the outskirts of the capital city of Kiev. This caused hundreds of small explosions. All right, now to give us more updates in terms of what's in fact unfolding in this war in Ukraine, we're joined in by our correspondent Anas Malik, who is joining us live from the capital city of Kiev and has been getting us all the updates from there. Good morning, Juris. Bring us up to speed with what is happening in the capital city of Kiev. According to reports, there have been several explosions that have been heard since this morning. Well, yes, uh, Saleh, we've heard a lot of explosions going off around the city of Kiev. Uh, those uh, smoke balls or fireballs lightening up the sky, the dark sky uh, overnight. And uh, we saw air raid sky sirens as well uh, going off early in the morning uh, here in the city of Kiev. That indicated that uh, the war or the battle is just around the gates of the city. It's nearby because uh, explosions could be heard uh, very clearly in the center of the city where I am. Now, the fight is currently about 25 uh, uh, kilometers from where I am in the northeast and in the northwest. In the northeast, the fight is currently ongoing from Brovery side, which goes on towards Chernivev and adjoins with the Belarusian border. In the northwest, the fight is currently ongoing in Irpin, Bucha, Hostomil and Borzil areas uh, of uh, uh, the adjoining areas of uh, Kiev city uh, and we've under we understand that uh, overnight Ukrainian forces claim to have made rapid progress as well Saleh. Right now also the issue you know of civilians who are stuck in these conflict zones now Russia and Ukraine we're given to understand have been speaking and also agreeing on humanitarian corridors but we also heard from the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky who said that in cities like Mariupol, Russia is not actually letting the civilians to get out of the city. Any, any reports on that front? Well, we've heard reports, similar reports like that. Uh, of course, independently, it's uh, difficult to verify the, such reports given the paucity of information that's uh, trickling through from there. Uh, but uh, the Ukrainian side has been claiming that the Russian side has been preventing people from getting out of the city of Mariupol despite the fact that it agreed on a humanitarian ceasefire. Now, the humanitarian ceasefire did, uh, understandably, it did go on for at least two days despite the fact that it was agreed for three days. Uh, on the first day, we understand that uh, uh, there were shelling being done from either of the sides. Both of the sides had accused each other of violating that ceasefire. But the next two days, uh, especially Wednesday and Thursday, uh, the humanitarian ceasefire did persist and it did lead to massive evacuations as well. And as a reason of which, uh, uh, as, as I understand, more than 4,000 people from the city of Irpin have been relocated and evacuated to safety. This is what the official statistics say. Uh, even in the city of Kiev, more than 50% of the population has left the city willingly uh, uh, as in when the government had given them the window of evacuation. Uh, the bigger problem remains is with regards to the artillery uh, supplies for the Ukrainian army because it struggles to have that uh, uh, that much armory uh, um, back up with it. Uh, they are trying to fight with whatever they have, be that with small arms, big arms, rocket launchers, anti-tank guided missiles, the, G the US uh, given javelins. Uh, so they've got a range of armory, but that's not much in terms, if I talk of, about to you about it in quantity. So quantitatively, they are struggling and that is the reason that the Russian side uh, is making progress because they've got l huge uh, and large uh, convoys uh, that are there and uh, they gave back up to the Russian side while the Ukrainian side tries to resist. Saleh? Absolutely indeed. And my last question to you, uh, Anas, is uh, we've been looking at how the Russian 
convoy that is said to be almost 40 kilometers, 40 miles long, that's been camping on the outskirts of Kiev now on the ground. What, what is the chatter amongst the people in Kiev? Half the population has already left, but still half has stayed back. What are they saying? When do they expect the Russians, if they intend to do so, to carry out an incursion into Kiev? Well, the city of Kiev is gearing up for an assault, won't be wrong to say. And that's it's an over-the-time process. For instance, uh, let's say if a road had two checkpoints. Uh, today, if I would go, it would have three and tomorrow it would have four checkpoints. Now, these checkpoints are not necessarily by the military. These are civilian defense volunteers as, as well who have picked up arms, who've been given arms by the uh, government in order to protect more and more trenches have been turning up more and more iron rods in order to avoid any tank movement or artillery movement have been turning up on the roads of Kiev. Uh, then uh, these tire busters you see they're there. Uh, then um, uh, as I said more and more camouflages are there. So citizens who have chosen to stay back a, they're there in the citizen defense forces or the civilian defense forces pardon me on that and the second bit is that uh, they are volunteering in whatever capacity they can. For instance, we went uh, and reported from a medical center. Uh, the youth had uh, who uh, could not get into the army. Uh, they have uh, formed community groups. They are volunteering in order to disperse medication and food to the elderly or to the or the or to the hospitals as well. In fact, they are also providing uh, military gear such as boots, uh, uh, gloves, and so on, and camouflages uh, to those volunteers volunteers who would want to uh, fight with their military. So this goes on to explain that uh, the city of Kiev is indeed uh, gearing up for an assault which they believe is inevitable uh, but nobody knows when it is going to come. It can be in days, it can be in hours. It depends upon the Russian military's progress and for now that has been very dim given that the Ukrainian forces have been resisting them at bay. Salih. All right, we'll have to leave there. Thank you very much indeed, Anas Malik, for joining us and getting us all those updates from Kiev. And do stay safe there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.